بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Followers of my Facebook would have noticed that I've been using two main terms and I've been talking about them a long time The first one is about the Jinx series and the second one is about the Jack So two, two words, two things that I've been talking about and I, I know that I owe you an explanation of what I'm doing Suddenly, suddenly there was a change in the way that I post I'm using colloquial Arabic and at the same time I'm talking about anything related to to life but not to translation in general. This is this is my, my main domain. It was translation. I was talking about them. So basically I have two things to talk about. The first one is the jinx and the second one is the jerk. So what am I doing here and what's what's the message? It's just writing something like rubbish to add to, to the to the garbage of, of what people say because obviously it doesn't have a significant value. Let, let's explain what's happening and uh, and I hope it's, it's going to be useful for you all and for us, for everybody who's listening to this video now first of all we have the Jinx and we have, as I said, the Jack <coughs> excuse me the Jinx is a series of the of things that's happening to me personally and I'm using those mishappenings something that happened in the way that I never liked them to happen something that happened it happens to all people but just not the, not the way that you like it, not the way that you expect it. Sometimes it's disappointing, sometimes it's frustrating. Now this is about the jinx. As far as the jerk is concerned, it's another story altogether. Very recently, some, some jerk, he's a jerk really, is uh, backbiting me, is talking about me in a bad way, and uh, ha has, has used his, his own cunning ways in order to persuade people that I'm not doing the right thing, and I'm not going to talk about that in details. I'm not interested also in talking about the person. What I'm interested in is, in both cases, the jinx and the jerk, is to talk about, rather than persons, to talk about the phenomena. What's happening around us, and mainly what's happening here, inside the mind, inside the brain. So all these stories have an objective, and all of them hopefully will be useful in psychology, in neurology, whatsoever, call it whatsoever, anyway. Anyway, if you don't like them, it's, it's okay. No, you, you don't have to listen to me also. You don't have to, to, to read anything that I'm writing. You don't have to agree, you don't have to disagree, it's up to you. But, but anyway, as I said from the very beginning, I do owe you an, an ex explanation of what, what I'm doing here. Now, first of all, the jinx. What is the jinx about? In order to explain the jinx, I want to talk about something that happened in the past, in the Greek philosophy, in the Greek tragedy and comedy, this, this time, the classical periods of time. Perhaps just very few of us know that in the Greek times, people had some kind of mixture between religion and between art, and between philosophy, and all of these things too, all together. There were two main uh, people that uh, had something to say. There was Plato and there was Aristotle, and I think there's a kind of conflict between them in terms of ideology and thoughts about what will happen. Plato, on the one hand, said that when you say, for example, that uh, this, is, this is a mouse, just a mouse for the computer, but for Plato, he would say this is not the real mouse because there are several mouses all over the world for computers. He would say that this is a mirror, this reflects the real mouse, and the real mouse is in heaven. It's up, it's up there. In other words, he believed in ideas, and those ideas are original. They are in heaven. They are pure. When there is a kind of mirror in this world to reflect those ideas, it is a kind of distortion because there is some extra. There are some extra characteristics given to those things, making them totally different from what's there in the in reality. So reality for Plato is something from in, in heavens, and it is pure, it is something sacred. What's here in this world, everything that we see and hear about in this world, the sea, the sun, the mountain, the mouse, the computer, yourself, everything, every, even the feelings, the hatred, love, etc., are all what he calls representation or dynamics. He's, he's talking about representation of reality. This is a very important thing to, to, to remember, because I'm just going to talk about what Aristotle says about that. So it is distorted because it's not reality. And Plato at the same time says something else. Now there are poets. And a poet is a person who describes not reality in heavens. He describes what he sees, what he feels. And because we humans have only five senses, we don't have more than five senses, our experience with those representations of reality 
is fated to be just simply restricted and confined to what we, th- what we would see and our perceptions are very narrow. For that reason, he says that poetry is a thrice removed from reality. It's removed from distortion. It is a distortion of distortion of reality, in other words. For that reason, he said there is no place in his republic for poets except for those who are inspired by the muses and for those who are inspired by the poets who are inspired by the muses. This is a very total story. He says that he doesn't agree with poetry. He doesn't obviously agree with art, with like uh, comedy and strategies, and this is... Uh, you can read about that in classical uh, history. Then, <coughs> after Plato, there came another person who's called Aristotle. Aristotle, in fact, made a very change, a very big change and profound change in, in our perceptions about what is strategy, tragedy, what's a piece of literature, what's poetry, etc., 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 etc. He started by saying that a play, a play which is being played by people, this drama whatsoever, is not an imitation is not a representation, as Plato said, but it is it is an imitation of life and action. It's not an imitation of the ideals that are in the heavens. And Aristotle says, yes, why don't we have these plays? It's okay. So he says it's a representation of, of action and life, what we're seeing here. Anyway, this is the main difference between them, and uh, after that there were some plays, there were some poetry, poems and poetry, and... Uh, by time, uh, things have developed into two types, into genres of the, the plays on the, to be played in the amphitheater. Before the amphitheater, people would sit and would try to learn, and people who were just uh, watching for the, the play, in fact, they are not for entertainment as much as they are here for, for, for what we call this kind of purgation, in other words, to purify their souls in terms of what you see. It's a kind of worship, worship you can say. Anyway, a tragedy and uh, a tragedy and uh, the comedy. The tragedy builds off what's called catharsis, and catharsis is a kind of something that happens to the spectator, to the person who's watching the play. And this is stage. This is a stage where the spectator feels pity and fear about the character inside the play. And because it's tragic, it is something that something happens that you don't want to happen to the hero. And you feel a kind of empathy with him. You feel in your in his place. What happens is that uh, your soul becomes purified. It's called purgation in 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 in, in this art of tragedies, etc. And uh, it purifies the soul. It releases. It releases, so to speak, the feelings that are restrained and uh, emotions that are uh, just inside you, and you just let them go out. And this is why people sometimes shed a tear when they watch a mo- movie that is tragi- that has a tragedy or whatsoever. This this is what's called the relationship between you and the hero who's suffering inside the uh, the tragedy, leading to catharsis. You call it proximity. You feel very proximate and very very close to that person, to the extent that you don't want this to happen to him because you don't want it to happen to you. On the other hand, we have the comedy. In comedy, we have alienation. We don't have proximity. Because a person may fall down and you laugh, and a person does something stupid and you laugh, but again, there's a kind of purgation, although it's not the same that we have in tragedy. You still have something like a purification of the soul, because you see those stupid things happening around you. And other people are doing that, and you feel that you are alienated, there is no empathy at all. You don't feel at all that you are the same person that's inside the comedy, because at the end of the day, nobody of us, none of us would like to be in such a position that people are making fun of. For that reason, you feel a kind of alienation. This is what we call in classical literature. It's alienation. You're very far away from that hero, and you learn a lesson. You learn a lesson from the mistakes of others. You change the mistake into an opportunity in order to learn from. And here I start with the jinx. When I started writing about the jinx, I'm talking about my own mishaps, something that happened to me. They are silly, they are destructive, whatsoever at the end of the day, something that I never like to happen to me. But here there's a very important point. Why do I talk about them in a sarcastic way? Why do I just display them and say, this is what happened to me? What is the purpose of all of this? In fact, what I am doing, what I'm trying to do, what I'm trying really to do here, is to get something out of my mind. Because every human being has a mindset, and this mindset can be dynamic. It can be what, what psychologists say, the growth mindset, it could be, on the other hand, a fixed mindset. The growth mindset, just to give me an example about a mistake that happens in your life, 
and when it happens, you say yes today. Today I cannot do that. Today I made a mistake, but tomorrow I will learn not to make it again. This is what's called the, the growth mentality or mindset. On the other hand, we have the fixed mindset, and the fixed mindset says to you, I cannot do it, I cannot uh, help keeping myself uh, crying, I, 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 etc., and you blame yourself. This is not the mentality that we want. What I am doing is to present my own mishaps, but something that happens to me. Whether I like it or not, this is what happened to me. And I'm trying to get it out of my mind just to see it in front of me and to see exactly what, what other perceptions that I can see when I look at the problem that happened to me in the past. And I do it sarcastically because I, enjoy, I, I don't want to feel any empathy with that situation. Even that situation, it has myself, me, as, as the hero of that mishap. I don't want to feel empathy with myself. I just want to feel alienated. I just want to feel that it's a funny person that he's doing that, that thing. Or that tragic thing is happening to a, fu- to a person who doesn't deserve any kind of, uh, a kind of uh, emotion or a kind of uh, tolerance or whatsoever, call it whatever you want to do, uh, to say. And uh, the, the, the issue is that when I look at it from different perspective, I have a different view, I have a different vantage point of view. It is in this way that I can see reality in a different way. I can see it in a different way, and when I see it in a different way, I start to, to get what's called in also psychology insight, something that has never occurred to my mind, and how to solve the problem, how to approach it in a different way, not to mention that other people are watching and reading those, those uh, posts that I'm making on, on Facebook, and maybe they can, even any one of them can say something. Some of them can be disappointed and say, uh, we're sorry that you heard this, some other people may make fun of it, and it is only this interaction between people, between how they see, between, between my perception of the text before I just spoke out what I had in mind and uh, uh, removed it from my, my chest. And the stage where people are just looking at it, it is something that we call externalizing the emotion that I had in mind. Now, this is very important. For that reason, I'm just doing all of this Jinx series. It is for this reason. You will hear today a very bad story that happened to me and something that just something that I don't like to happen. It's just to see there. This is what we, what's called also reframing the problem. I just reframe the problem, try to see, to, to see it from different perspective. I try to learn from the mistakes. Instead of saying, as I said, that it's a mistake, that I am, proves that I am nothing, it's a mistake that I can learn from, and I can turn it into an opportunity. I can turn it into an opportunity. So this is about the jinx and what about jerk. On the other hand, we have the jerk, a person who is a kind of antagonist, a person who, who has nothing to you except envy, who wants to destroy you, who hates you for one reason or another, even if you're a good person. And here, this is another story that we will keep it for, a lo- for, a, for another video. Uh, and just in, uh, in about five or six minutes, I'm going to just to the mosque because it's today it's Friday and I have to go there to the mosque. Uh, anyway, uh, just in a nutshell, I want just to say something whenever you have a person who's doing all of these bad things to you, first of all, in my opinion, I say, no, you're wrong. This is the first thing that he has to know, even if he's right, because the way that he's doing it, by backbiting me, for example, it's something that's not acceptable. By trying not to face me, it's something not acceptable. You have to face me if you have any problem with me. But to go to other people and uh, just spread uh, ungrounded uh, rumors about me just because you envy me, just because you don't like me. Anyway, it's up to you. And uh, I want just to say that this is something that I start reacting by saying, no, this is wrong. This is the first thing that I do. And the second one is to include it in the Jinx series by making sarcasm about the whole situation that he's making to me. It's trying just to see things from a different perspective. But most importantly, before I finish this video, and I will continue that later on in other videos, inshallah, for my uh, followers on Facebook and my friends. They are not only followers, but uh, my friends, my dearest friends, in fact. I want just to say something. Take this lesson. This is very important. Experience has proved, and even scientific research, that when you try to identify with a group, you try to be included. That if suddenly, suddenly, people start stopping giving you the ball. They start playing with the ball alone. You immediately feel excluded. This is what they do in order to make you feel that you are not part of the group. And what happens to you as a kind of reaction, as a kind of coping mechanism, is that you try to 
to surrender, try to give in, try to give up and uh, try to say, okay, I will take your rules, I accept all your rules of life, and you try to imagine what their rules are, you try to be part of them by committing the same mistakes they are doing, forgetting that they excluded you from the very beginning because they know that you are more powerful than them, because they know that you are better than them, and because they know that if they leave you alone, you will simply shine and they will be in the shadows. In other words, please, this is very important. It has to do with self-esteem as well. When you identify with a group and f- suddenly find yourself excluded, they will simply, what they will do is to instill in you a very bad self-esteem. You will have no value about yourself. I'm sorry for talking about that very quickly. And as I said, it's time now for a prayers. And on uh, in Friday, I wish you a very beautiful day. Uh, day today and uh, hope to see you next next time next time we'll talk about neuroscience inshallah i will talk about all research that have has been proven and it will change all our lives inshallah thank you very much for listening and see you next time